everybody, welcome to Chandler Physics, or Chandler Science rather, Conservation of Momentum for AP Physics 1. We're going to get the stream started here in just a second. Um, just got to fill a, do a few more things, and we'll be good to go. And am I, am I showing up there? All right, okay, now I'm showing up. All right, welcome to Chandler Science, AP Physics 1, Conservation of Momentum lecture. We're going to get started here in just about two seconds. Give me a second to get started here. All right. I thought you guys are kids. I thought that this is a kid channel. Y'all are kids. Aren't y'all kids? Y'all are not kids? I'm kid friendly. I'm a kid friendly guy. Alright, anyway. Okay. Let's do this thing. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. So many viewers. Great. Alright. Um, cool. Well, let's just dive right in. Conservation of momentum. All right, so much like energy, momentum is also a quantity that is conserved. Um, however, as we mentioned before a few times uh, in class, I think I might have mentioned this, that energy isn't technically conserved in the universe. Um, however, uh, momentum is. Momentum is conserved. Like, there's no exceptions to this rule, as far as I know. Maybe there is, but I don't, I'm not aware of it. There are exceptions to the conservation of energy. Right? We talked about um, cosmological redshift, how you do kind of lose energy over time in the universe. But when it comes to momentum, momentum sticks around. Right? Whatever momentum we had in the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, that's how much momentum we'll have at the heat death you know, in 10 quadrillion years or whatever. Um, so momentum is conserved 100%. Hopefully you kind of are realizing that in your lab as you see uh, the momentum uh, total momentum before the collision of the cards and then add to the uh, total momentum of the cards after the collision. Hopefully you're noticing they're the same. Of course, you're all doing your lab because I know you're all great students and you're not going to procrastinate and do it the last minute. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in now. Uh, so momentum is conserved. The number one thing we're going to do with momentum is talk about collisions. All right. So our uh, conservation of momentum formula, is, just like we had energy, we had energy uh, initial equals energy final, we're going to have the same thing with momentum. So if you watched the last video, and you were supposed to have, so you should know then that momentum is little p. So we're going to have initial momentum equals our final momentum, right, for a system. Now since um, momentum is equal to m times v, we're going to say that the mass of an object's initial velocity equals the mass of a second object, so called mass one. Uh, mass two of an oh, you know what? I'm gonna let me back, go back a little bit. If we have two objects that are colliding, I should say, we're gonna have two objects. We got mass one and we got mass two. Okay, they each have a velocity. Okay, that's what momentum is: mass times velocity. So we have mass one times velocity of object one initially plus mass 2 times the velocity of object 2 initially, right? So this is our momentum in the beginning, right? We have object 1's momentum here, and we have object 2's momentum here. And that must equal uh, the mass of object 1 times the final velocity of object 1 plus the mass of object 2 times the velocity of object 2 final, right? So all we're saying here is basically um, the momentum, this is P here, right? This is P initial of object one. This is P initial of object two. 
we add up the total momentum initially, we have to it has to equal the momentum at the end, right? The momentum of object one final combined with the momentum of object two final, right? That's all we're saying. Very much like energy. Remember energy, we'd say, okay, the energy initial must equal energy final. If we had kinetic initial and we had some potential gravitational energy initially, and at the end we had, you know, only kinetic, it had to all kind of add up, right? It's the same concept, okay? Same concept. So let's do a problem with this idea here that our total momentums initially have to equal the total momentum at the end. Are there any questions in chat? Let's try to keep the chat, you know, like relatively normal. I know it's hard for some of you guys. Um, all I see are smiley faces. Okay, well, I'm already have to banning people. I really hate, you know, that some of y'all can't just be normal. Um, and now I have to remember how to ban people. So that's fun. Well, I don't want to remove them. I want to delete the person. All right. Oh, I know. I do expect it, but you know. All right. So. Uh, let me just look at that. Well, you can do duos in Apex now. They finally put that in. All right. All right. Hey, Oprah. Good to see you again. All right. So, wow. Let's let's try a problem. Um, let's say we have a two carts on a frictionless plane, a frictionless surface here. Okay. Got two objects. Let's say this one has a mass of two kilograms, and it is going to have a velocity of five meters a second, and it's going to collide with another object. Let's say his mass is one kilogram. Oh, you know what? I'm not against that policy, Chuck Games. Whoever gets the highest score on the next text becomes a moderator. I think I'm okay with that. You know, with with a few exceptions. But I mean, the students I don't want to become moderator probably aren't going to get the highest grade. So, you know, um, I'm not against that idea. Whoever Chuck Games is. All right, so we have two objects here. This object, this two kilogram object, is going to collide with this one kilogram object. Afterwards, after the collision, this, this is kind of before, this is before collision here. After the collision, this first object, the two kilogram object, you know, it's going to slow down a little bit, right? It collides with the other object. It's going to slow down a little bit. Initially, this object's at rest. This one kilogram object initially is at rest. After the collision, the two kilogram object only has a velocity of one meter per second. The question is. How do we find the the um, velocity of this second object after the collision? Okay. Um, I'll consider that cozy page. Uh, <laughs> hey, if I can, if if being a mod is like incentive for y'all to actually study, then I'm all you know, cool. How do you make mod? Yeah, I don't know, Aaron. I'll figure it out. Okay, uh, so we want to know what the velocity is of this one kilogram object after the collision, right? We had the velocities before the collision, five and zero. We have one of the object's velocity after the collision, but we want to find the other one. So how do we do this? Anytime we have collisions, we're going to have um, conservation of momentum. When things collide, whether they collide and then bounce off, collide and stick together like they were in your labs, or they start together and then explode like a grenade, we're, that's going to be a conservation of momentum problem. All right, so you see stuff like this happening, you want to think momentum. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we're going to use conservation of momentum. M1, <clears throat> excuse me, V1I plus M2 V2I. This is, again, initial momentum must equal final momentum. M1 V1F plus M2 V2F. Now, students tend to hate this. Uh, set up here because it's like it's so many letters and numbers ah, they get confused and stuff but it, you know you just got to be diligent and kind of pay attention to details and I, you know there's not I don't there's no like shortcut to this right it's kind of a long messy equation but um, the good news is it's based there's no square it's just it's, it's it's multiplication and addition like that's pretty much it so it's not hard uh, math wise it's hard to keep track of sometimes like wait, which one was mass two which one's mass one that sort of thing so you got to pay Pay attention to detail, but other than that, it's not really that bad. Okay. Um, 
All right, so let's go ahead and plug in some numbers now. We got M1, V1, I. So, okay, mass one. Let's call this guy mass one, and let's call this guy mass. Well, that's kind of confusing, isn't it? Since they have the masses. Let's call this mass two, because it has it's a mass of two kilograms. And let's call this one mass one. So, mass one's mass is one kilogram, but its velocity initially is zero. So, we plug in a zero there for V1, I. I hope y'all are actually watching chat, or watching the video, and not just looking at chat. I really, I'm really hoping that. I'm hoping. Uh, plus, m2 is a mass of two times velocity of the object initially. Well, it was going five meters a second initially, so we put a five in there. Equals. Now we know that object uh, two's mass afterwards is two and had a velocity of one, but we don't know object one's velocity. We know his mass is one, so we're looking for M1, or we're looking for V1F here, right? Object 1's velocity after the collision, okay? We want to find out this velocity here after the collision. So initially a velocity, object 1 had no velo had no momentum initially, so it's 0, plus the momentum of object 2, which was 10, equals uh, 1 times V1F is just V1F, right? Oops, V1, not VI. Plus two times one is two. All right, I'm gonna I'm running out of room here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go up here in the top right corner. So follow me. Zero plus ten is ten, equals v one f plus two. We solve for v one f. Subtract two from both sides, and we're gonna v one f equals eight meters a second. All right. All right. So does this make sense? Uh, we got our bigger object going five meters a second colliding with a smaller object, um, giving most of its momentum, right, transferring the momentum to the smaller object. Uh, so it speeds up to going only eight meters a second, while the, the larger object slows down to only going one. So it's kind of imagine in your head, a large object smashing into a smaller object. Smaller object gets a lot of velocity. Big object slows down. Makes sense, I think. Um, all right, any questions about that, please post in chat. Um, try to keep the chat to a minimum. Well, Chuck Games, they won't always add to the same thing because sometimes you're going to lose some energy. We'll get to that in a minute, though. But they won't always add up to the same thing. Um, all right, so that might seem pretty simple, and it's not crazy hard, I admit. At this point, I don't, you know, which is good, right? All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, let's go to the next slide. There are three kinds of collisions. Or, well, there's three different scenarios. I don't want to call them types of collisions. There's three scenarios we're going to have. Okay, these are the ones we did in our. Um, in our labs, all right? So the first scenario is collide and bounce. When you have two objects, and you know, you could have more than two objects colliding, by the way. You could have three, four, five objects. You just add on their momentums initially and add on the momentums final. So it's not like, um, it's just more numbers to play with, but it, it all kind of works out the same way. In collide and bounce, you're gonna have the setup that we just did, right? That's what we had. M1 I, sorry, there's no initial mass, it's the same mass. M1 plus M, sorry guys. Okay, here, try this again, third time. M1 V1 I plus M2 V2 I equals M1 V1 F plus M2 V2 F. So you can, you can see how I just said a minute ago, like keeping track of these things is kind of a is the, is the hard part, and you just how I kind of like messed it up a few times, right? So you got you got to be careful with this. So we have mass one times its initial velocity plus mass two times its initial velocity equals the mass times velocity final velocity of both objects, right? This is for collide and bounce. But what if you get a collide and stick problem, like you did in our lab, right, where we had two objects that collide and stick together? Or like in a car crash where the cars are going, they collide and they stick and they kind of move as if they're one object, right? Or a, a player in a football game tackles another player, right? They kind of move together like they're one object. Um, how do we write that equation? Well, it's very similar, except that uh, this side is going to be the same. M1 V1 I plus M2 V, that's a 2, not an L. E to I equals. Now, since the objects after the collision are going to move as if they're one object, we're going to combine their masses, right? They had the same velocity, 
So let's say m1 plus m2 in parentheses and then times v f, the final velocity. Remember in your lab when they, the lab cart stuck together and moved together, they had the same velocity. So this vf, there's only one final vf, right? Because they moved together. We just combine their velocity or combine their masses and times velocity. All right, now the third way we can do this is in the other, and again, in your lab, we had an explosion. Now, this is not a literal explosion, right? But have, you have two objects that are together and they move apart from one another. Um, kind of like uh, in the video she did today, uh, in the gravity movie with the, she, the astronaut had the, um, the fire extinguisher and she throws it up into the air. And so if you throw the extinguisher up and she moves down, that's an explosion type collision, right? They're together initially, moving together as one object, but then she throws the extinguisher up and she moves down. So now they're separating and moving in different directions. This is where direction is super important. Direction is super important in all of these, right? But it's like extra super important in explosion because if you get the directions wrong here, you're going to be totally screwed. All right, so how does this one work? Well, since the objects are together initially, it's kind of like the, the reverse of this collide and stick one, right? So initially they're together. So we add up their initial velocity, uh, in initial masses, I mean, times their initial velocity. And then since they separate after the collision, they're two, they're two separate objects. Then we're going to have m1v1f plus m2v2f. So it's kind of the reverse of collide and stick. Now, you don't have to memorize all these. The really one only you have to kind of really know is this first one because you can kind of derive the other two from that one, but it might be helpful to kind of memorize all three. You know, it's up to you what you want to memorize and not memorize, but you really only got to know this first one, and you can kind of figure out the rest from there. All right, um, so I'm just scanning chat for any questions. Looks like y'all are just... In Clyde and Stick, do we add the masses together for P? Um, in Clyde and Stick, do we add them? We add the masses together after the collision, because they're, remember, after the collision, they're basically move as one. So we add the masses up and then multiply by their, their, their velocity, which is the same, right? They have the same velocity. So, Juan, let me know if that answered your question or not. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's our three collision types. Now, here's the really fun part that y'all are really going to like. We can do this in two dimensions. This is all one dimensional, right? An object moving in a straight line, colliding with an object moving in the same in the same plane, right? What about two dimensions? Can we do this in two dimensions? Absolutely we can. We do it in two dimensions. It's the exact same setup, right? So we're gonna have, and you're really gonna like this. If you, if you hated what we just did, you're really gonna you're really gonna hate this. But that's okay, because that's fun. You're gonna have fun, whether you like it or not. Um all right, so Juan, let me know if that answered your question. All right, so M, for a two-dimensional collision, all right, this is, let me, let me label this so people know. Two dimensions. Two-dimensional collision. I guess this would be a, a, a collision in two dimensions, not a two-dimensional collision, but whatever, you get the idea. All right, good. All right, so we're going to have the same setup. M1, V1, I, but then we're going to add on a little, an, another subscript, an X. For the x plane, right? Plus m2 v2 i x equals m1 v1 f x plus m2 v2 f x. Now I know some of you are thinking like, oh my god, so many little subscripts and letters. But remember guys, it's just momentum, right? It's momentum of object one initially plus momentum of object two initially in the x direction. And then these are momentums of object one final and momentum of object two final. That's all it is, right? So I know all the subscripts and little letters can get confusing. They're just labels to help you remember what's going on, right? So once we have the uh, stuff in the x direction, so we're doing this in two dimensions now, now we got to think about the y direction. So we're going to do the same thing in the y direction. m1 v1 i y plus m2 v2 i y equals m1 v1 f y plus m2 v2 f y so obviously this is tons of fun and if you don't think this is fun you're crazy <laughs> all right you're having fun james I, I i know you are it's you know you can admit it to the chat it's okay all right, so let's, let's do a problem now with a two-dimensional collision. So let's say that there are, uh, is a bird flying along um, this direction. We got a bird, 
bird with a mass of half a kilogram. And let's call this object two, actually. This is a little small, I'll make it bigger. This object two has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms, and it is flying to the left with a velocity of 10 meters a second. Whoops. Velocity initially of 10 meters a second. And another, uh, maybe a bird or a frog or I don't know, whatever you want it to be. Use your imagination. Let's call this object one with also the same mass. So maybe it's another bird. Maybe they're, you know, two birds are going to collide. And this bird, however, is going at an angle. He's going to go up this direction. And I mean, look a little bit different here. Draw us a little better. Object one, mass of 0 0.5 kilograms, going at this direction at a speed of 20 meters a second. Now, his the total speed is 20 meters a second. So what do y'all think we have to do to solve this? How are we going to get the velocity in the x direction for this bird if he's going at an angle? And it's called the angle here to the horizontal is 30 degrees. What do y'all think we got to do there? Someone tell me in chat. What do we got to do to find the x and y velocities of this velocity of this uh, bird? So someone's, I'm going to wait in chat. So I'm waiting for chat. We'll draw a little component. Uh, oop, draw, we'll draw pink and green uh, arrows for uh, the different x and y directions there. So waiting for chat, waiting for the lag to catch up. Come on. Components. There they go. Okay, yes. We got to find components. Components of each. All right, so let's do the pink one first. Let's go ahead and just label them both. Um, let's do pink. So this is the X component, right? So my VIX. Yeah, it's so small. Make it bigger. I'll write it down here in pink. V, I, X direction, right? Horizontal. We're going to use cosine for that, right? Because it is adjacent to the angle. So 20 cosine of 30 is, uh, I wrote it down somewhere. Where did I write it down at? I don't know. I'll do it again. Make sure you're in degree mode, by the way. 20 cosine 30, 17.3. And for the y direction, that's going to be sine, right? Because it's opposite. So, so ka toa. So ka. ka is cosine for adjacent, sine for opposite. Uh, sine of 30 is a half. So, half of 20 is 10. So, this one is 10. This is viy, right? V. I y direction is 10. Now for the other object, for object two, we don't have to worry about any components initially because he only has one component, right? His horizontal component is negative 10. It's going to the left, right? We have to keep track of direction here. So this guy, uh, object two, has v i x of 10 to the left, and his v i y is zero. He doesn't have any vertical velocity, right? It's just zero. All righty, so we're gonna find then Let's do uh, the x direction first. So we got m1. All right, what's m1? m1 is 0 0.5 times the initial velocity of object 1 in the x direction, 17.3. We just did that. OK. Plus mass 2 times uh, mass of object 2 it's just, it's again, 0 0.5 times the velocity of object 2 initially in the x direction. Now, we got to pick it at negative 10 here. This is super, super important, All right? <laughs> All right, James came out of the closet. Thank you, James, for coming out about how much you like AP physics. Okay, anyway, please keep track of direction. It's very important. Uh, this bird here is going to the right. We're calling right positive. This bird is going to the left. We're calling left negative, right? So you gotta keep track of direction. I cannot stress this enough. So negative 10 here, now equals. Now what is the um, momentum in the horizontal plane after the collision? Well, 
Um, I guess I should tell you that, huh? So after the collision, we need an after, don't we? Forgot about that. All right, so this is the before. Let's label this before. Here's the after. After the collision, uh, bird one is going straight up. And the question is, what is bird two doing? So after the collision, bird one has a vertical velocity up, only vertical, of eight meters a second. The question is, what is bird two's velocity after the collision? All right, so that's what we're trying to find. So let me draw this. Let me re just redraw this out of the way over here a little bit. So it's bird one going straight up at eight meters a second. And then the question is, what is bird two doing? Right? What's his velocity? Okay. All right, so uh, let's go back to over here. So we're doing the x direction. So we have the initial momentums uh, in the x direction. Now let's do the uh, final momentums in the, in the x direction. Well, you can see object one after the collision has no momentum in the x, in the x direction. That's kind of easy. It's just zero, right? Plus uh, mass two, which was 0 0.5 times v two f x. All right, kind of a mouthful, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and simplify this now. Half of 17.3 is 8.66 minus 5, right? And again, so you can see right here, if you were to accidentally forget the negative sign and do a positive there, you're just, you're kind of screwed. I mean, you're, I don't, you know, you're just, you're SOL. I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna get the wrong, wrong answer. So uh, be very careful about that stuff. So James, uh, when we say head on, we, we what we mean we don't it doesn't have to be going at each other. We can do any kind of collision. We could do head on where they're kind of kind of you know going at each other, or we could do a collision where one thing is already going this direction and this one going faster and it catches up and bumps it in the butt and they you know ha have a, an exchange of momentum. So head on or not, uh, the, the the equation works either way. You just got to keep track of direction. All right, so we have 8.66. Uh, minus 5 on this side equals 0 0.5 times v2 fx on this side. This is uh, 1.66 1 there, vfx. We're going to divide by a half, and we're going to get uh, 3.66 equals our v2 fx. All right, so there we go. So now we know this uh, second object here, mass 2, is going to be going to the right, actually. It gets, it gets pushed back to the right. But what about the vertical direction? Well, for vertical, I'm going to need a new slide. So I'm going to go to the next slide. And we're going to figure out the vertical. So let's go to this side. So again, we're going to say M1, V1, I, Y, plus M2, V2, I, Y, equals M1, V1, F, Y, plus M2, V2, F, Y. All right. And we said, going back and looking, that after the or in the beginning, initial of the before the collision, the bird one mass one had a vertical velocity of positive 10. So, all right, their masses are 0 0.5, and had a velocity initially of 10. Now, object two initially has no vertical velocity, so this is just zero, right? They don't have to worry about it. Equals. Now, after the collision, mass one had a velocity of a positive eight, right? It's still going up eight. So what will uh, mass two's vertical velocity at the end be in the y direction, right? So on the left-hand side of the equation, we have five plus zero equals half eight is four plus 0.5 times v2 fy. We subtract the four over. We get one equals 0.5 times v2 fy. We divide by a half to cancel out or to get rid of the half here, and we get v2 fy equals two meter second, positive two. So what do we got? We got bird two, object two. Draw a little bird. Let's draw a little bird. Real bird. Real birdie. Uh, I don't know what that is. And he's got. Uh, he's got big old wings. It's a goose. I'm drawing an airplane. I don't know what I'm drawing. Leave me alone.
You know, it's not that bad. All right, give me a break. It's actually, for me, you know, I graded my drawings on a curve, all right? So that's my bird. So he's got a horizontal velocity. Uh, what do we say it was? 3.66 positive direction. So this way, 3.66. And a vertical velocity of 2. Up 2. All right, so what is his total velocity then, right? Now, you know, remember, these are components, right? But we want to combine them to find the resultant total velocity. So now we got to find out what the resultant is of this vector. So let's go, we'll go pink again. I like pink. This way, right? So basically, it's the hypotenuse of the triangle, right? So we can use um, Pythagorean theorem here. 2 squared plus 3.66 squared e oops, equals my velocity squared, right? That's the hype, the resultant velocity, so I'm calling it V. So 2 squared is 4 plus 3.66 squared is 13.4. We add those up and we square root both sides and our resultant velocity is about 4.17. The 8.66 came from uh, the momentum initially in the in the x direction, uh, Chuck. Game. Sorry to I missed your question there, but so it's remember the mass was the mass of both objects was 0.5 kilograms. So the mass times the velocity uh, is 8.66. The so velocity was 17.3. Oh, someone answered you in chat. That's good. Hey, way to go, Oprah Winfrey. Look, see, Oprah's got your back, dog. I'm gonna get you. Look at that, Oprah. All right, Panda, Panda V1 Olador. You got to tell me how you're lost. Don't just tell you a lie. I don't know how to fix it if you just say you're lost. So, sorry, I'm kind of having trouble keeping track of chat and looking at this. I'm not a I'm not a pro streamer, so. Um, but it looks like someone helped Chuck Games. Oh, he got Okay, he got it. All right, good. Uh, 3.32. Oh, you're... Wait, what? Oh, did I miss the number up a little bit? Oh, my bad. Wait, where'd I get... What's 0.32? Yeah, it's going to be on YouTube afterwards. Yeah, I'm looking at chat now, Chuck, but I don't know what you're lost about. Did I mess the math up somewhere? Let me go back and look. Um, 17.3 times a half. 8.6 minus 5. Oops. Divided by... Or, oh. Oh, my bad, guys. Wow, I totally... Yeah, I totally goofed that, didn't I? Well, this is why... I'm not sure what my one... I don't know how I got 1.66. Okay, so... Y'all aren't lost. Y'all are just correct in and being like, where did they get that number from? So I don't know why I got a 1.66 here. It's my fault. Um, this should be 3.66 because 8.66 minus 5 is 3.66 times the half is 7.32. So that's what y'all are telling me. So that's my fault, guys. So that's our vertical. That's my horizontal uh, velocity. So, uh, you know, I brain farted. It happens. Made a mistake. And y'all caught it, and I'm just not a pro enough to check chat uh, as I'm going along here. Yes, y'all are correct. It is 7.32 for the horizontal velocity. Waiting for the lag to catch up. All right, so we're going back here now. So we're going to fix this. So my horizontal velocity is not 3.66. It is 7. 0.32. So, <laughs> all right. So let's go back in here. That's gonna. We're gonna fix this. We're gonna get it right. Erase all that. All right. So now we got 7.32. It shouldn't affect my any, any of my calculations in the y direction. So that should be good. Um, yeah. So 7.32 squared plus 2 squared equals my velocity squared. So this will be 4 plus 7.32 squared, 
53.6 equals v squared. We're going to square root, square root everything here. Plus 4, square that, 7.6. So my velocity is actually 7.6 meters a second. Let's put that in pink. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Panda, you're right. I don't know how I got one there. I don't know what I was thinking. I must have just been... I don't even, I, don't, I, got, I got no excuse. I got no excuse. I'm going to own it. I'm going to own that one. That's on me. All right, so our total velocity is 7.6. Now, what about the angle? What if you get a problem where they're saying, okay, great, you got the velocity, 7.6, but what angle is it going at, right? It's going straight up, more to the flat, kind of 45 in the middle. What's that angle going to be? How are we going to find that angle? Well, we're going to use a little trigonometry here. We're going to say we know sine of an angle is equal to the uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to plug in. We're looking for the angle here, right? I, opposite, this angle right here, right? We're looking for that angle right there. Opposite is 2. So put a 2 in for opposite. Hypotenuse, now we know, is uh, 7.6. On the calculator, I was just uh, doing the Pythagorean theorem calculation on the calculator. 7.6 equals sine of theta. So, whoop, yeah, I find it, yeah. Uh, so, 2 divided by 7.6 is 0.26. So, it says sine of theta equals about 0.26. Now, we're going to do inverse sine. So, theta equals inverse sine of 0.26. And on the calculators, it's like second sine. Instead of doing sine, do second sine on your calculators at, at school anyway. And I'm getting about 15 degrees. All right. So Xavier is correct. This is why you have to double check your work before moving on. Absolutely correct. You know. Always go back and if you got time, go back and look it over. So there we go. Now we have the velocity of the bird after the collision. We got the angle they're going to go at, 15 degrees. Looks good. So, all right. I'll wait for a few seconds for chat for the lag to catch up. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And I'm very sorry about that mistake. I'm not sure what my brain must have been, you know, going too slow or too fast. Or I'm not sure which one. But anyway. Okay, yes, James, I'll do that. All right, my bad. Well, to clarify, though, yeah, James, I will do that. And just to clarify, all, all I was doing was punching in the Pythagorean theorem stuff. Rationalize the sin. <laughs> I don't need to rationalize sin. All right, uh, let's move on. So, now that we've done all that, there is more to do. Believe it or not. All right, let's talk about impulse and collision. So we know what impulse is. We talked about that in the last video. Impulse is delta P, and there's a few ways we can define it. We can define it as force times time, or we can define it as the change in an object's mass times velocity, or a mass times an object change velocity. So M, um, or M times V minus V naught, or final minus initial velocity. I did not eat. I haven't eaten since. I don't know, 11 o'clock this morning. All right, so let's say delta P. All right, let's say we had a problem. Let's do a problem. So the only way to really do, you know, kind of learn this stuff is just to practice and do problems. So we're going to do a problem here. Um, so what we, we, we have to remember, right, just like in your labs today, and I want to clarify, not, not with a lab today, our, our, our demo today that we did with the lab, the lab cart rolling down the ramp and hitting into, smashing into the force sensor. The impulse should have been the same 
on both collisions. With the plunger out, where it kind of gives a cushion, and with, without the plunger, the impulse should be the same, right? Um, however, what's different is the time of the collision is different, right? It's a little bit longer with the with the plunger, so the maximum force should go down, and the average force goes down when you do that. Okay, so let's do a problem where you have an example like this. So we're gonna have we're gonna say we got two people. All right, they're gonna jump off a cliff. We got, or, you know, they're they're stunt devils. Okay, they're not jumping. They're not committing suicide. They're they're doing a stunt for a movie. Okay, it's fine. Everybody, and everything's fine. Everything's, everything's fine. Fine. All right. So the, the mass for both. Let's say they have the same mass. They're twins or whatever. Right. Hundred kilograms for both. They're both gonna do the same stunt off the same building. Okay. Both have the same mass. Hundred kilograms. Uh, just checking chat for questions. Okay. All right. And let's say that, uh, the height of this cliff is, uh, 10 meters. So the height of the cliff, uh, H height is 10 meters. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's say you get asked a question like this. Two people jump off the cliff or the roof of a building, whatever it is, and they one lands and kind of just, you know, you know ninja, ninja style, like, you know, it lands and bends. The other one does a barrel roll. That barrel roll going, right? Um, so who is going to experience less impact force? Now, when this guy lands, this guy is the ninja lander. You know, he does the, like, he just lands and he, you know, kind of cushions his blows his knees. His time of impact... Not his time, not his time of fall, but when he, when he lands, impact time for him is going to be 0 0.05 seconds. Whereas Mr. Barrel Roller over here, his time of impact is going to be 0. Or 0 0.75 seconds. So a lot longer, right? Barrel Roll takes you a few more seconds. You, more of a cushion, right? Because you're, you're, you're using not just your knees to bend, but you're bending your knees, you're rolling on your back and your shoulder. So you're kind of absorbing the blow over more time. So a lot longer time of impact. Um, so uh, let's find out who experiences more force. Well, we already know it's going to be this guy, right? The, the guy on the left who um, has a smaller time. Let, let's find out what the actual force is on him, okay? Let's do that. First thing you have to find is, well, what's their impulse? We have T, right? We're looking, we're looking, we're doing this equation right here. So we have the T, time of impact. We got to find what their impulse is, delta P, and we got to find out what their force is. All we have right now is T. So how are we going to find out what their uh, what their impulse is? Well, to find impulse, we're going to use this equation on the right. We're going to use this guy here. We know their masses. We know what their initial velocities are, right? Zero, because they just jump off the cliff. So they don't have any initial velocity. They're going to gain velocity as they fall. So we got to find out what this V this V here is, right? We gotta find out what the final velocity is right as they hit the ground. To do that, we're actually gonna use some kinematics, right? There's other ways you could do this. You could find out what time of fall is, you could use, you know, work and stuff, but I think it's the easiest way, believe it or not, the easiest way in this problem, excuse me, is to do kinematics. So we don't have T of the fall. We have T of impact, but not time of the fall. So Let's use our third kinematics equation, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x, right? Change in position. Our change in position is 10 meters, right? That's how far we're falling, down 10 meters. Our acceleration is 10, right? Negative 10, technically, since that's the acceleration of gravity. We're falling through the air, so our acceleration is negative 10 times two. Our initial velocity we said was zero, right? Because we're just we're starting from rest. We just fall off the cliff. We're not like, you know, being shot out of a cannon or anything. So our initial velocity is zero, so this just goes away. And that's gonna equal our final velocity squared. Uh, oh you know what? This is also our position change also negative ten because we're going down, right? So they're both negative there. So negative ten times a negative ten times two is two hundred. We squared up both sides to get our velocity and that V is going to be 14.14, uh, 14, the square root of 200. So that's the final velocity. Now what we're gonna do with that, you're right, it is almost instantaneous. I mean, it's very quick, right? 
Uh, yeah, 0.05, that's what I meant. All right, so here's our final velocity. Um, and it, sorry for like, sometimes I'm in the middle of saying one thing, but then I see chat and you know, there's a, there's a lag between chat and the video. So if I go back, I'm just answering an old question. So sorry about any discontinuity there. Um, all right, now we're gonna use this final velocity. We're gonna plug this in to there, right? So we can find delta P. All right, let's do that. So delta P equals the mass, which for both of them is 100, times their final velocity, which is 14.14, minus zero, because their initial velocity was zero. So delta P, impulse, change the momentum, all the same thing, right? Is 100 times 14.14, and so our delta P is uh, 1,414 kilograms times meters per second. Now here's, again, here's the important thing, right? Notice that the time for, for this equation didn't make a difference. Both of their impulses are the same. They have the same impulse. Where What will differ is how long how long the impact time is and how much force they experience, right? But I, I can't stress this enough, guys, and, and students always get this confused. It's an important point to make. When two objects collide, uh, in this case, two identical objects, the same mass, had the same, you know, experience the same collision, just in, in different ways that, you know, one kind of does a barrel roll or whatever. I'm kind of rambling here. The impulse is the same for both, right? Um, so hopefully you're all noticing that in your labs too, okay? Uh, hopefully you're noticing that in your labs. So anyway, now that we have delta P, now we want to find out what the force is, right? That was our whole goal. What's the force on this, on the, on this, on this first guy? And what's the force on the barrel roller, okay? All right, so now we use this, this equation right here. So now we know delta P. Delta P equals FT. I have chat. I mean, it's 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 right next to me. I have like live chat. It's just I don't see how it'd be any different on my phone. There's a lag between my stream and like and you guys. Y'all know that, right? That's all. That's how YouTube works. Um, so anyway, uh. Yeah, all right, so delta P is 1414 for both people. F, now let's find out what the imp, what the force is on the uh, ninja lander, or whatever you want to, you know, the, the normal, no, normal guy who lands here. His time was 0 0.05 seconds. So we're going to divide by 0 0.05, and we're going to get the force of impact here. The average force of impact, actually, is going to be uh, 1414 divided by 0 0.05, which is 28,200 newtons. 28,200 and 80 newtons that is a lot of force guys he is a dead person he's gonna fly now like a pancake uh so this guy's this guy unfortunately he's at a minimum breaking both his legs <laughs> uh and uh you know maybe more probably more so that's just twitch uh i think maybe yeah I maybe i should start doing Oh wow, Oprah! I'm I'm disappointed in you. Don't 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 uh, advertise that subreddit. That's not good. Yeah, I think it's just Twitch. There's definitely a lag here. But maybe I'll try the next stream on Twitch. I keep saying that, and I just go to YouTube because I know YouTube. But maybe Twitch is better. Anyway, so this guy's dead. <laughs> he experienced 28,280 newtons of force. What about our barrel roller? All right, well, delta P equals FT for him also. His again, his moment, his impulse is the same. It's still 1414. F. Now his time though is 0 0.75, so we divide by 0.75 both sides, we get a force equal to um, 1885, 1885 newtons. So here's a, here's a critical point, guys. By only increasing the amount of time of impact by less than a second, 0.7 seconds in fact, we experience 26,000 roughly, I'm um, rounding, fewer newtons of force by increasing time by 0.7 seconds. That's not very long, right? This is why, think about a car crash, right? A car collision. Even if your airbag or, or your seatbelt or whatever, or the crumple zones I talked about, increase the time of collision by like 0.1 second, right? Or even a millisecond. It, look how much force it can save you, right? It can save you thousands of newtons of force. Um, 
that won't be applied to your head or your skull or your, or your, your rib cage or whatever. That can save you broken bones. It can save your life, right? So these fractions of a second matter. You can still how have a big of a difference they make, okay? So that's a collision with impulse. And again, the key thing to remember here is that um, the impulse is the same for both. Um, all right, now I want to go to your, oops, to your labs real fast. I want to talk about impulse in a collision here real fast. So we have say object one, has, let's say it says uh, mass of one. Let's say it all has mass of one. It's object one, object two. Let's say all masses are the same. All mass is one kilogram for everything. And this guy's going to collide with him. Okay. Let's say he's going at a velocity of five again, and he has a velocity of zero initially. And then after the collision, uh, the object one's velocity is, uh, let's say it's two. And then uh, what is object two's velocity? Let's, do this, let's solve this real fast here. Let's solve it real quick. So we're going to say um, initial momentum of object one is five plus his momentum is zero initially, object two, because he has no velocity, equals final momentum for object one is two, mass times velocity is just two, plus um, one times, I don't know why I wrote a three there, sorry. I went to write a question mark. Uh, one times V2F. So quickly, quickly solving for this, this is uh, three, equals v2 f uh, so it is going to be three in fact so i just knew that in my brain all right so all right we quickly solved that so this velocity is in fact three now i'll talk about impulse so real fast let's look at the impulse the change in momentum for both objects delta p for object one is the mass times change of velocity all right so mass times delta v what was the change in velocity for object one his mass is one, change of velocity is final minus initial. So it's two minus five, so negative three, right? Negative three, hope you're with me. Delta P for object one is a negative three. What is, it, what is the delta P for object two? Also one times delta velo change of velocity. So one times, what was my change of velocity? Well, fi again, final minus initial, right? Final is three minus my initial, which was zero. So it's times three. So my delta P for object two is a positive three. Hmm, 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 hmm. There's something going on here, guys. There's something going on here. <clears throat> All right, so think about it, guys. Remember Newton's third law? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. When cart one smashes into cart two, it applies a force to cart two, right? But at the same time, cart two is also applying a force, a reaction force to cart one. They're pushing on each other, okay? So it makes sense to think that if cart one loses three units of momentum, its impulse is minus three, it makes sense kind of, if you think about Newton's third law, that object two would gain three units of momentum. This is gonna be true all the time, all right? Once you know the impulse of one object, if they're colliding with another object and you're trying to find its impulse, it's going to be the same but opposite impulse of the first object, okay? So again, just for example, just to clarify, let's say I have two objects. And, they're, and this time, let's go, let's go at each other, okay? Let's go at each other this way. And this object, when it collides with this one, it gets knocked back a little bit. So this is, this is the before, and then here's the after. Uh, object one, object two. Object one gets knocked back a little bit this way, and object two, let's say, is at, is at rest. And it has no velocity at all after the collision, okay? Um, so, in, so you can see that the delta P for object one is gonna be some negative number, right? Because it's going to the right, but then it changes to the left, right? Think about final minus initial. Let's just say this is negative one here, and this is positive five, all right? Momentum. Remember, the direction of momentum is in direction of, of the velocity. Okay, so my initial momentum, let's say it's five, but my final momentum is negative one. Well, what's final minus initial? Negative one minus a positive five equals a negative six. All right. 
So that means I'm negative 6 for my delta p. Well, that we automatically know then what delta p is for object 2. It has to be a positive 6. Has to be. Now you're thinking, how can he, how can he have a positive 6 momentum gain if he's at rest after the collision? Well, look. His momentum is zero now, right? But what was his momentum initially? It was negative six. Direction is super important. Final, zero, minus initial, negative six. Zero minus a negative is, is, is plus. We get a positive six, all right? It always works out every time, all the time, all right? Once you know the change in momentum for one object, the second object's change in momentum is equal but opposite in direction of the first uh, object's impulse, all right? Let me chan scan chat real fast for a question. <laughs> Y'all are funny. I don't, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going really fast. I'm trying to, I don't want to be in this video and have like three hours long or something. So sometimes my brain is just, my my brain has a lag time too. All right. Um, all right, so I don't see any questions in chat. So it looks like we're good. Oh, wait, like on one hand, I want to ask questions and interact in a meaningful way, but on the other, it's probably a good thing I'm going to take. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely a better the understanding everything. I mean, if you have a question, ask it. But, I mean, if you're getting it, that's fantastic. So don't, like, feel bad about that. Um, it's okay that there's no, like, well, not, there aren't a lot of questions in chat. It's totally fine. Okay, um, so I hope this part makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. So let's go on. We're, we're wrap, about to wrap up here. So that's good. All right. Um, well, we have a little bit more, but that's okay. So this is important. So, so far we've done conservation of momentum in collisions. We've done two-dimensional collisions. We talked about impulse in collisions and how the impulse is the same, but the, the force and time can differ. And then we, we talked about how the, when two objects collide, their exchange of momentum, their delta P, their impulse, change in momentum, all means the same thing, right? Is equal but opposite, which kind of relates to the Newton's third law if you want to think about it that way. Um, okay, last thing is we have two categories of collision. We have what are called um, elastic collisions and we have inelastic collisions. <laughs> 24 hour stream when everyone makes when the entire class passes the uh, AP exam or you know or half the class or something you know, some some something like that. Okay, um, so what's an elastic collision? Okay, now you, you guys might hear different definitions for this. I, I have read different definitions over the years of what elastic means and what inelastic means. So uh, I'm going to tell you one thing. To, but you, you may have heard that elastic means when, when two objects bounce off each other. Okay, that is not the definition that the AP College Board wants you to learn. All right, when I'm about to write down what the AP College Board wants you to learn. Elastic collision means when two objects collide and kinetic energy is conserved. That is a definition you need to remember, right? And an inelastic collision is a collision in which kinetic energy K is not conserved. All right, that's it. That's the definition. Now, you, again, you, you might hear the definition in textbooks or online or other places, and they'll say they'll say things like elastic means they collide and they bounce off, and inelastic means they collide and they stick together. That is not the formal definition I want you to know. This is the definition I want you to know, right? This is the definition I want you to know. And, and the reason why is, is an important reason, because you can have objects collide and bounce off and still be inelastic. That happens all the time, okay? So this is the definition I want you to know. Um, All right, so this is important. So I'm looking at my notes real fast. All right, um, so energy can be conserved or not conserved. Now remember, this is in the system, right? So let's get a quick example. Let's say we have a box, uh, two boxes on the ground, and they're gonna slide at each other and they're gonna collide. Now if we have no friction, then this will be a, a, an elastic collision because we're gonna conserve all that energy. But what if we add in friction, right? What if there is friction? Well, then we're not gonna have a perfectly elastic collision. We're going to lose some energy to friction. Okay, the energy is going to go away. Energy is still can energy is still conserved, right? It just dissipated into the environment, into heat and sound, right? But since kinetic energy won't be conserved, we will have an inelastic collision. So you got to keep in mind: okay, is there friction? Is there not friction? Uh, what's the system, right? What's the system uh, that we're talking about? 
Um, okay, so just keep that stuff in mind. Let's do a few more examples. What about the question comes up sometimes, can you gain kinetic energy during a collision? What do you think? Can you gain energy from a collision? Kinetic energy from a collision? I mean, I must be spacing out, like making a lot of mistakes if all my students are like, you need to eat, mister. I appreciate it. I will eat afterwards, I promise. Um, so the answer is yes. And hopefully, I haven't seen lag. Yeah, I'm definitely going to Twitch because this, this chat lag is annoying as heck. Uh, so we're going to say the answer is yes. You can gain kinetic energy, actually. So you give an example. How could you gain kinetic energy from a collision? Well, what if you have two objects right next to each other and uh, there's energy stored in the spring and the spring pushes off one and they gain kinetic energy, right? So they're gaining kinetic energy. They have nothing in the middle, no kinetic energy initially, and then they have kinetic energy at the end. Yeah, you can gain kinetic energy. Um, you can also have chemical energy, right? What if you had a grenade? Uh, you got a grenade and it ex explodes, and, and a literal explosion this time, like an actual chemical, you know, violent explosion. Uh, well, you're going to get fragments flying everywhere. It's going to gain kinetic energy from all these fragments. So you can gain kinetic energy in, in an explosion. We're not going to really do that very much. Um, in this class, in fact, we might not do it at all, but it's a thing that can happen. It can happen. Um, I want to make another point up here, real fast, just real quick. Go back. So, we're talking about kinetic energy being conserved or not. I want to just reemphasize energy in general, total energy, of course, is always conserved, right? The question is whether or not kinetic energy is conserved. Okay. All right, last thing we're going to talk about is what if we have a, a collision in which we don't we have two unknowns. For example, let's say we have an object of uh, mass one. Um, no, just kidding. We're going to change that. We're going to make this uh, object of mass two. This is a two kilogram object, and it's going to collide with a one kilogram object. And again, we're going to, we're going to call this for simplicity's sake, object two and object one, mass of two, mass of one. And this first object has a velocity of one meter a second, and object two has a velocity of 12 meters a second. And then afterwards, we don't know anything. We don't know either object's velocity. We don't know the two kilogram object's velocity, and we don't know the one kilogram object's velocity. How on earth are we going to solve it if we have two unknowns? Okay, here's the thing, guys. You can solve this, but it must be an elastic collision. This one I'm about to show you will only work if the collision is elastic. All right? Yes, yeah, so Asad, it does increase. So, Asad, so going back to answer Asad's question, it can increase kinetic energy, but. Momentum is still conserved. Remember, kinetic energy has no direction, right? It's just it's scalar. If you if, if you have fragments flying off from a grenade, gaining kinetic energy all different directions, you're gaining kinetic energy. But if you think about their momentum, when an, an object flying this way has positive momentum, and an object going this way has negative momentum, they can't just other out. So the momentum is still conserved, even though we gain kinetic energy, which is kind of weird, but kind of neat too. No grenade labs, no. All right, so how are we going to solve this problem here? We have two unknowns. Okay, again, you can only solve this if the collision is elastic. All right. Now, before I solve it, I want to show you something. All right. Now, I could I could derive this expression I'm about to show you, but I don't want to go through like 10 minutes of doing that. So just take my word for that this equation works. If you want to see how it's derived, I can show you later in class or, or after class, something like that. And again, this only works for elastic collisions, right? For an elastic collision. The velocity of object one initial plus velocity of object one final must equal the sum of object two's velocities. Right? So we have the sum of object one's velocities before and after the collision and the sum of object two's velocities before and after the collision. They must equal one another, right? And y'all may have noticed that in this last problem here, I think, right? Uh, what did we do one uh, right here, right? This is. Oh, no, maybe not. I don't, okay, whatever. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's got to be elastic, right? This equation does not work 
unless the problem tells you that it is a perfectly elastic collision. All right, so now I made my disclaimer. So if you mess up using this, it's not my problem. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this problem? We're gonna do substitution method, right? Let's go to the next slide real quick so I make a little, have a little more room here. So let's rewrite this. So object, two kilogram object has a velocity of 12 initially. The one kilogram object has a velocity of one initially. If we know it's an elastic collision, then we can use uh, both the elastic, both our equations to solve this. So wait, 12, oops, not 12, two, I mean, two kilograms, don't know its velocity, and we, and we don't know the one kilogram object's velocity. So we want to find both. How do we do it? All right, so we have two equations here, right? We have our conservation of momentum equation, M1, V1, uh, I, and let's do this in, let's only do this in one dimension. It would get too, too annoying and long if we did it in two dimensions. Uh, M2, V2, I equals M1, V1, F plus M2, V2, F. Yeah, Panda answered you, James. Uh, this only works elastic because if it's not elastic, kinetic energy is not conserved. It gets lost, and so our velocities won't won't add up to the same necessarily before and after the collision because we're losing some kinetic energy to the environment. Yeah, Panda, excellent. I don't, Panda, I don't need to know who you are later. Tell me tomorrow in class so I can give you extra credit. If your name is not in your name on YouTube, like Oprah and uh, Panda Chuck Games, I need to know who you are. Don't say it in chat. Just tell me in class tomorrow. Um, all right, so here's the first equation. Now we're also going to use the other one, right? We, we, I just gave you last time. M1 uh, I plus V, or sorry, V1I plus V1F equals V2I plus V2F. All right, we're going to use both of these. So let's solve. We're going to set up um, the first momentum equation. Let's do this one here. And hopefully I won't run out of room, all right? So we got. Uh, Mass of this two kilogram object times its velocity is 12 plus the mass of the one kilogram object times its velocity of also one equals uh, mass of object one is two times V2F plus one times V1F. Okay, let's rearrange this for V1F. So we have. Oh, no, let's, do, let's do it for V2 actually. So we're going to have 24 plus 1 equals V, or 2 times V2F plus V1F. And then let's subtract so V2F over here. So I have 25 minus 2 times V2F equals V1. F, right? So we put this equation in terms of V2F, right? So it's V1F equals this, but we still we have two unknowns, right? What are we going to do? Well, let's go back to this equation here. Put a hashtag with this one. So this is that one, and now we're going to do this one. V1I plus V1F equals V2I plus V to F. <laughs> All right, um, so this equation, now let's also solve this uh, for V2F. All right, so let's plug in some numbers here. V, we, know, we know the initial velocity, right? V1I initial was 12. We don't know V1F though equals V2I was one plus V2F. So let's rearrange this uh, for V2F. All we do is minus one over here, so we get 11 plus V1F equals V2F. Now, can you all see what we're gonna do? We're gonna substitute. We know that V, wait, hold on, did I mess up? Yeah. 
Yes, I did. Okay. No, I didn't. I'm good. Okay. Just making sure. All right. Um. Oh, wait. oh you know what, though? Yeah, let's... Let's do it this way. We want to solve for V1F, right? Uh, yeah. So let's do it this way. Let's say, let's do minus 12. So let's say V1F, oops, not I. Sorry, guys. Again, you know, I haven't eaten, I guess my brain is dying. V1F equals, it's minus 12 over here, so you get negative 11 plus V2F. Is that why I want to do this? How did I do it in my notes? I saw this earlier. Just checking my notes real quick, guys. Sorry. Um. All right. Yeah, let's just do it this way. Okay, so um, we got this here. Now we're going to take this equation. And since V1F equals this, we're going to take that and plug it in over there. Or we could take, you know, either way you want to do it, I guess. Let's, maybe it's easier to do it the other way. Let's take this. And since that equals V1F, we can plug that in for V1F, right? Either way you do it, it works. It doesn't make a difference. So let's do it this way since it's the last thing I wrote. So instead of writing V1F equals negative 11 plus V2F, We're going to say 25 minus 2v2f equals negative 11 plus v2f, right? And, ooh, I messed up somewhere. Why do, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing something wrong. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just brain farting everything here and my hunger, my stomach is killing me. Or not killing me, but I'm starving. Big bro moment, yeah. Uh, I don't know what that means, but what did I do wrong? I mean, I'm just doing the wrong thing here, I think. I'll go back and check my math. 24 plus... Oh! Wow, man, I... Oh, I'm killing myself. It's I'm, I'm, it's my fault. I don't have V1F. Ah, so sorry, guys. Very sorry about all this. Gotta go back. See, this is, this is the advantage of not streaming. I don't have to make these mistakes. I edit them out. You'll never see the mistakes. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I am just all over the place. I mean, I am. That was fine. What I had was actually fine. I am just totally brain farting. Oh, my God. Okay. This is so embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. What I had was actually fine. This is 25 equals 2V2F plus V1F. That that was that was totally correct. I don't know why I erased that. So my bad. Um, so 25 minus v2f equals v1f. That was okay. All right. Over here, I I don't know final velocity, so I'm gonna have uh, 12 plus v1f equals 1 plus v2f. So I'm not sure why I uh, rearranged that, but my bad. So let's rearrange this for uh, it's minus. So let's get 11 plus V1F equals V2F. All right, now we're gonna plug this. Uh, let's plug in this up here for V1F, right? Since 25 minus V2F equals V1F, let's plug in that for this V1, all right? So we're gonna get 11. Plus, now we'll plug this whole thing, plus 25 minus V2F equals V2F. So let's add a V2F to both sides, plus V2F here. So we're going to have 2 V2F on this side equals 11 plus 25 is 36. Divide by 2 both sides, and we get V2F equals 18. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's wrong. God, what did I do wrong? What am I? I'm killing myself right now. I don't. I'm, this is really embarrassing and uh, <laughs> and awful. But maybe it's good. Maybe it's good that you know you see someone work through their mistakes and y'all learn so you don't make the same mistake, right? All right. So what can we do? And I wish chat was live so that um, my dog is asleep 
on the blue chair behind me. Y'all can't see him. He's, he's y'all can't see him in the camera. I, I'm just. Wait, is it wasn't wasn't it two v two? You took out the two out of two v two. I don't know what I did. So let me go back and, and double check. Double checking everything. Is my momentum equation correct? Mass times initial velocity. Yes. Mass times initial velocity. Yeah, I'm good there. Mass times velocity. Mass times velocity. Yes. So everything's good. It looks like I'm good here. All right. So we're okay there. Over to the second, the hashtag equation. My velocity of my initial mass was uh, 12, okay, plus, don't know, equals one plus, don't know. All right, so we're good there. And then we're gonna subtract V2F. All right, so we're good there. All right, so what we need to do now, all this stuff is correct, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> oh boy, I am legitimately embarrassed. Okay, we're gonna take Eleven plus twenty-five minus. Oh, there it is. Okay, I spotted it. I didn't make a mistake. This is two. And someone, I think someone said that in chat. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't catch it. This is minus two v two f. Wow. All right. So everything we were doing is fine. I forgot this two right here. I wrote minus v two f instead of two v two f. So you can see how guys it gets very. You know, all these numbers, all it gets very confusing. You, you know, I am not immune to the same mistakes that y'all make, right? So whenever you're at home and are doing homework and you're in class, you're like, man, I don't get it. I feel dumb. <laughs> I feel dumb, right? I made the same mistake a lot of y'all make all the time. Same simple stuff, right, Miguel? <laughs> Calling you out <laughs> on stream. Making silly, silly mistakes, okay? So if I kept that two in there, yeah, 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 yeah y'all. So now, now chat's catching up to my, yeah. Y'all y'all are seeing this before I'm seeing it, so thank y'all. It's just a lag in the chat. So it's two V2F, not just V2F, uh, V2F. So, wow, I thought I was going crazy for a minute. I'm like, what did I do? I couldn't see it. All right. So many numbers, it gets very messy. All right, so now that we got that straightened out. I think we're good. So let's go ahead and plug in um, this. Try this one more time. Plug it in up here for my V1F. Right, so we're gonna have 20, 11 rather, and then, whoops, plus 25 minus 2 V2F equals V2F. We're gonna add 2 V2F over here, so it's 3 V2F equal to. Thirty-six. I'm just seeing if my numbers are equals thirty-six. Thirty-six over three is twelve, which is what it was in it. Okay, so I'm still making a mistake somewhere. Oh, my signs are mixed are mixed up. I think. Let's set this equal to. V1F instead. So we got that one problem mixed up, but we have another little problem here. So let's do this this, this way. Let's say V1F, uh, not I, V1F, equals V2F minus 11. Let's do it like this. Um, so now let's plug in. This will help our sign. Our, our signs are getting mixed up. That's why we're getting the wrong answer. So we always, you know, whenever you go to substitute in stuff, Substitute in, get the thing you're plugging, you're substituting in for, in this case the V1F, get it by itself on one side of the equal sign. It'll just help the signs get straightened out. So now let's do this. So 25 minus 2 V2F equals V2F minus 11. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to, now we're still getting 12. Hey, leave me alone, Panda. I can't do math in my head, all right? I'm still getting the wrong answer, though. So we're still doing something wrong. I should not be getting... I'm getting 12, and that's not right. That's not right. 
So where is the mistake coming from? Where is the mistake coming from? Right, because if we do this, this is 36 over 3 is 12. And that's what my velocity was initially. So we're doing something wrong. Someone help me in chat. What are we doing wrong here, guys? I did it. The very frustrating thing is I did this earlier and I, got the, I did it fine. And now that I'm under pressure on chat. See, I said pressure. I can't handle it, right? I, I have test anxiety too. Let's plug in the other way. So we're getting 12. That's wrong. Let's plug in. Let's do it this way. Let's say, uh, let's do it minus 1. So it's 11 plus V1F equals V2F. And let's plug it in this way. Maybe that'll be better. Shouldn't matter. Shouldn't make a difference. Someone tell me where I'm. Someone in chat, tell me where it's going wrong. I, 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 I don't, I'm not seeing it, but you know, I'm delirious. Apparently, I haven't eaten all day, so I, maybe I'm just missing it. Um, 25 minus 2 v2f equals v1f. Oh. Oh, we called. Oh my God. Okay, I think I see the problem. I got negative one for V2. Okay, I think I have my labels mixed up. So we're calling this, the one kilogram object, V1, right? So the one kilogram object is, this is one here, plus V1F. The V2 is a, is a two kilogram object. We're calling that, that's 12, plus V2F. So we should, we should be getting uh, so if we minus tw minus 12, we get negative 11 plus V1F equals V2F. That's the problem. Wow. I think that's the issue. Okay. Um, let's, let's, yeah, let's rearrange. Let's do it for V1F though. Let's solve V1F. So I'm going to do uh, minus 1. So get V1F equals 12 plus V2F. Plug in V1F. Yep, there it is. Wow. Okay, that was the issue. You know, I feel dumb. <laughs> and I feel a little embarrassed because, you know, I'm supposed to be the expert here. But I, I wondered, this is actually a pretty good lesson. I mean, so I, I don't know if y'all caught that. Let me go back and explain. I mislabeled them, right? I had V1, V1 as 12, but, the, but V1 was only 1. So I mixed my labels up. I called V1... I was mixing up object two and object one, right? So, blah, what a what a crazy, stupid, silly mistake to make. So, so my first mistake was I, I forgot this two down here, right? When I subtracted it over, I, I I forgot that I forgot that two, okay? When I did that earlier, y'all y'all caught that. This mistake was mislabeling. I was I, I mixed up v v one and v two in in this momentum equation over here, the start equation. You know, my object two uh, had a twelve. A velocity of 12, right? Uh, and mass of two. Over here, I, I mix them around. We can't do that. We gotta keep we gotta keep the same labels, right? So that's our problem. So now here we go. And I want to take uh, v, this equation here for v1f. We're gonna plug it in up here for this v1f. So we're gonna get 25 minus 2 v2f equals 12 plus v2f. I'm gonna I'm gonna plus 2 v2f both sides. And I'm going to minus 12 both sides. So these 12s cancel. These cancel here. So we're going to get 13 equals 3 V2F. I'm going to divide by 3 both sides. And I'm going to get 4.67 meters per second. Wow. All right. So we got there. Um, so this is a lesson for everybody, right? Including myself. That we have to be very careful about what we're labeling 
if we call one object object one and I, like the other object object two in the momentum equation, we have to keep those same that same labeling method in the other equation, right? Otherwise, we are just going to get super out of whack here, right? Um, so that's what we did wrong, right? And that's why I kept getting, you know, weird numbers, right? So uh, one more lesson here: if you do this and you keep getting your velocity for the object equal to what it was originally like when i did it earlier i was getting 12 right and I'm like well i can't be 12 that 12 was what it was initially it can't have the same momentum i can't have the same velocity after the collision that doesn't make any sense so that's it that's a key in your head okay i made a mistake let me go back and find where i made the mistake at right check your arithmetic check your labeling make sure everything's squared away right so just like i did i messed up all right so that's object two uh final velocity 4.67 what about object one well now that we have object two's velocity the rest becomes very simple um we're going to go back up to this equation right here and just plug in the four into here right and then we can just solve for v1f um so yeah we're gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna squeeze this in on this page we have one plus v1f equals four plus or sorry, 12, almost to the end, plus 12 plus 4.67. So that's uh, V1F equals 16, one plus V1F equals 16.67. Subtract one, we get V1F equals 15.67. All right, so then actually, does that make sense? Well, yeah, remember V1, object one only had one kilogram of mass, right? So that's half the mass of object two. So object two is going 12 meters a second. It's pretty fast. Hit object one, speeds it up quite a bit. And object two uh, slows down only to 4.67. So this makes sense. This is the correct answer. And I'm looking at my notes. I, I saw this earlier today. I'm looking at my notes. I'm like, why did I go wrong? And I, I, I couldn't, I didn't recognize Right away that I mixed mix the labels up, but that's that was a mistake. That was a big. There you go. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna eat. I promise. I'm gonna go to Subway, get me a veggie patty sandwich. It's gonna be delicious. What? Okay. It object object one. The one kilogram object gained velocity. Yeah. Object two. So our final object, the two kilogram object went to slow down. Right from 12 to 4.67. The one kilogram object sped up from one meter a second to 15.67 but it got hit pretty hard right this object which had twice the mass and 12 times the velocity right object one only was going one meter a second so when object two hits it it has twice the mass and way more velocity right so it makes sense that it would speed up the one kilogram object quite a bit and right? it makes sense that it would do that right it should be v1 equals v11 plus v2 Yes, that's what I got. Eleven plus v two minus one, which is fifty. Yeah. Yeah, different mass. Yeah, the one kilogram, the two. Sorry, the two kilogram object lost velocity, but the one kilogram object gained velocity. Oprah Winfrey, check. I that's what I did, Oprah. I'm pretty sure, right? Thirteen. No, Haj, I'm gonna chip in. And get out of here. All right, so that, that's the stream. We're going to end it here. Um, so we have, uh, I'm going to recap. Let's go back and look at all the slides we did. Just want to kind of recap everything. Um, so first we had our basic conservation of, of momentum problem uh, with our basic setup. And th this equation works for every collision, right? Whether they're head on, uh, one's stationary and hits the other one and they move, both move, or they're both going the same direction, but one speeds up and bumps it like in that last problem. This works for all of it, right? Um, so we solved one of those. We talked about different kinds of collisions and different equations you can use for different ones. We discussed two-dimensional collisions and how that works and finding the vector components. We talked about um, uh, how to find the angle and the resultant velocity of a two-dimensional collision. We talked about impulse and collision, how impulse is always the same for both objects with equal and opposite. Uh, what differs is the force and amount of time in the collision that takes place. Uh, we talked about how, again, how impulse is the same, equal but opposite for both in the collision. And then we did um, that again. We talked about, oops, sorry guys, the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. Uh, and then we, have, we found how we can use substitution method 
to solve uh, if 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 the collision is elastic and only if it's elastic we can solve it if we have two missing velocities we can still solve for those velocities using substitution method uh, with these two equations right here of course make sure you keep your labels right <laughs> which is a which is a challenge right believe me i know part of the part of the challenge here is just keeping everything straight right as you can see i i made several mistakes just in this lecture right and i even have my notes with the solutions already on them and i still made the mistakes okay so don't feel bad all right it, it happens to the best of us so just hang in there we're going to practice all this stuff tomorrow we're going to keep practicing practice practice we'll get more notes online later thank you guys for watching the stream i'm going to go get some something to eat right now because i'm starving oh jordy they want to say hi to you come here baby come on i'll go grab him he's taking a nap Okay. This is my monkey bear. He doesn't like being held. He's kind of fighting me right now. This is my monkey. Okay. <laughs> it's my monkey. Okay. All right. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you in class tomorrow. And uh, thanks for everything. If you have any questions over this, you can post. You know. Probably best to e uh, message me on her mind or um, uh, or email me. Uh, but you know, I saw it. The, the chat was great. Y'all caught all my mistakes. Good job there. If you have a question, you know, watching this later on, or you, or you think of a question, message me on her mind or um, uh, email me, uh, and I'll respond that way. Because you know, I don't have a life. Because y'all are my life. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, shit, sorry.